Pro Brews and Pro Bras, please welcome to the stage, Watto.
from retired filmmaker George Lucas. our Philadelphia debut. Kids, I don't think I will ever get used to hearing an applause break for Crawley. <laughs> I, I, I looked up to see what had happened. Crawley happened. I thought he was here. But of course, you know, Crawley has been with the show since the first, uh, the very first episode. Uh, and uh, I can't imagine doing the show without Crawley. Uh, but Crawley, for, for a year, for decades, really, didn't take a credit. No. Uh, because I think we agreed that uh, when, when, we were, when we were making movies, it would be distracting. I mean, it's very similar to uh, James Earl Jones didn't take the credit for doing the Vader voice in the first movie. And everyone knew. They yeah. saw the movie, they went, that's James Earl Jones. Yeah. In the same way, people went, that's fucking Crawley. I know. And, and, I know from Crawley. They weren't like, is that just the candy? They were like, <laughs> why is Crawley on credit? And they, they actually both do uh, This is CNN, but Crawley does it in the captions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but it's so nice to, to hear that because I feel like like Crawley spent so many years yes. just putting in the work. Yes. And and this recognition at this because let's be honest, Crawley will outlive us all. Uh, Crawley has no you know like you are you have no limits. You know most of us if we're not if you're I mean, this is heavy to get into. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Digital creations are eternal. They, yeah. They'll live as long. Well, I suppose they need power. So there's a way, there's a, a form of, of grid failure that is a, a, a version of death. But you could be restored. Yeah, I think that happened. We did an arc of like two episodes where that happened. <laughs> no, but imagine, imagine something catastrophic, like the, the whole the eastern seaboard, the power grid, all the servers. You know, just imagine... And Marco would move west. I don't know <laughs> what you mean. Well, west isn't safe. There's, there's more danger out there than out east. What's out the west? Oh, fire, mudslides, earthquakes. Rattlesnakes! Yeah, the rattlesnakes. <laughs> cowboys! Cowboys, yes, yes, cowboys, rodeos. Rodeos! But, uh, but let's not dwell on, on, on uh, mortality. So, so <laughs> let's do so, rodeos as a thing. Well, uh, many people get hurt at rodeos. Yeah, usually the people who choose to participate in that. Yes, but people will say, well, this ain't my first rodeo, implying that the first rodeo might have been dangerous. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Oh, you know what? I need to check on somebody. No. Oh. Hold on. There's a... I had a baby recently. Um, this is... Uh, this is my R2-D2 Tamagotchi. <laughs> That is not just any R2-D2 Tamagotchi. No. That is a limited platinum R2-D2 Tamagotchi. Yeah, only the best. <laughs> oh, this is easy. He just wants to go to sleep. I turn on the lights. Good night. <laughs> I thought he was going to be fussing through the whole show. Uh, so sleep training seems like it's going pretty well. Oh, yeah. I was, I was worried because with previous Tamagotchis or my real children, right. uh, it's, you go through that period where you just don't sleep. <laughs> But this one uh, uh, is just a dream. I, I guess that comes with age. You get more relaxed when you're an older parent. It's not, you're not nervous in the same way. Well, what are you doing, Mark? Just putting my water down. George, how many Tamagotchis have you had in the past? Is this old hat for you? I, I had several in the 90s. I had a Jawa one. Jawa oh, Wee Yeah, Jawa Wee yeah. yeah, I had Compu Kitty. I had Digital Doggy. I had Microchimp. Uh, all, all the classics. 
have you thought about buying the, the underlying IP to the uh, Tamagotchi original character? That feels like a, a new potential gold mine. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of the IP business. I'm a museum guy now. <laughs> It's not my jam anymore. It's not your jam. No, just hang it on the wall. That's what I say. <laughs> hang it on the wall. Yeah. Speaking of hanging on the wall, Patrick Cotner's here. <laughs> okay, hold on. Since when do you make a little entrance? <laughs> do you cheapishly go? <laughs> Who, me? The little cutie pie? I like that, I think. It won't sit. <laughs> Uh, how are you, Patrick? Great, how are you? How's your little station over there? I don't, yeah, it's good. I have a laptop. Dude, I don't know why. It's not connected to anything. <laughs> we're not it's connected. It's not live streaming. We're not getting fan art. But Patrick! Patrick! Yeah. Patrick! Yeah. You bought the cheesesteak. I did. You want to eat the cheesesteak? Yeah. I'm so hungry. I know. <laughs> starving. We put off dinner, and now we're eating pizza. Yeah, I didn't do that. They... They said, let's all three get cheesesteaks. They said, I'm going to have dinner in a normal hour. You can eat during the show. Now, by the way, the dinner that George Lucas had was chit chat. George chose to go to the single most New York franchise. I don't live in New York. I don't live in New York. We don't have that. I don't have one your scout the range. So we used to do this show in New York. I know you used to fly in for it. Mm -hmm. Did they want to eat uh, before they came to the show tonight? Yeah. Answer one at a time. <laughs> yeah, like the wave. If we can do it like the wave, if we can do it quickly, it just start at this end and everyone just say the main item you have for dinner or the genre of food that you or have. You can just clap, but don't start until the last person says <laughs> any start saying. Okay, are we ready for this? Alright, and I'm gonna follow my hands. So we go one, two, three. People got more enthusiastic about their meal at when they thought about it a little bit more. <laughs> now I'm worried, is it, le is it rude? We have guests to bring out and I don't think we have food for them. This is so much food. <laughs> oh wow, what a first world problem. <laughs> My god. Uh, the, Pastor, shame on you. The cheesesteak is a little difficult to fit under the snap. <laughs> so I got cheesesteak egg rolls. <laughs> Watch this for a second. And by the way, Patrick, don't think I didn't notice that you're the only one who didn't give the cheesesteak egg rolls an applause. They look good. Yeah, they did. I ordered it very well. Um, I think we should introduce our guests and bring them Absolutely. on. Do you think that's a good idea, Water? Yes. I don't do the introducing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I forgot to get the introductions. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our two guests tonight, Shannon DeVito and Allison Zyman. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Is it rude? Let me ask you first, both of you. Is it rude that that Wado and Patrick are having their dinner now? Uh, no, you're I'm kind of, I, I'm vegetarian, so I've never had a Philly cheesesteak. Whoa. In your life. <laughs> In my life, yes. What, have you ever had an alternative cheesesteak? No, not even that. You know, like a cheesesteak that gets up and doesn't do like hard jokes and is sort of working <laughs> off the whole thing. Like, what else? What else? Uh, cheese rates. <laughs> oh, so a uh, cheesesteak that hasn't sold out yet. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and it's framing it as like a choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know what TV is for, like zombies. I don't want to do TV. <laughs> That's not really, at that point, it's not really stand up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't had that either, and that sounds like too sentient of a cheesesteak for me to feel comfortable sure. eating. So, yeah. Thanks for the best. Shannon, what's your opinion about Philly cheesesteaks? 
Why are we cheese? So, uh. Alright, for these steaks. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. Yeah, I like them. I yeah. like the chicken ones better. You know, it's the cheese that made me not want to have them either. Okay, let's dig into this. Because right. we had this conversation with George. Yeah. George said he likes cheese, he likes meat, he likes sandwiches. Yeah. He likes a sandwich of cheese, <laughs> he likes a sandwich of meat. The second cheese and meat are on the sandwich together, he's out. <laughs> is he he's fine with pizza. Fine with pizza. Fine with pizza. George, yeah. folding a pizza slice. If you have to. <laughs> yeah. If you have to. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's different when you're on the go than when you're in a sit-down pizza establishment. I think it's a little bit weird if you're in a, a sit-down place at a restaurant. I don't feel like folding it. But if I'm on the go, if I'm walking the street, it's very uh, useful. Is that, is that okay with you? <laughs> Fucking messy little monster. Messy little monster. And by the way, that nickname Sticky. Messy little monster. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things where it's like Harrison Ford's in Star Wars. He's also in Indiana Jones, but like other Indiana Jones characters aren't in Star Wars. Other Star Wars characters aren't in Indiana Jones. <laughs> you know, I like Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones. I like Harrison Ford in Star Wars. I don't see Creepio in Indiana Jones. Unless he's, on a little, uh, unless he's on a little higher level. I was now. going to say. Yeah, you don't hear him, and the main thing about Creepio is he doesn't shut up. <laughs> Anybody we know? That's right, Patrick. No, no. Don't say anything. <laughs> Let's talk about comedy. Hold on. I tried to eat the egg roll and I can't do that. What happened? This strap from my hat in my mouth. <laughs> and now it's covered in cheese. Hold on. Let's talk about comedy. We all work in comedy. Ah. Yes. <laughs> and we're in a comedy theater. So much comedy happens in this room. One of the funniest rooms in Philadelphia. People say that. Is that a true thing? That when people say a room is funny? Do you find that? Are there venues where like that's a funny room? I think there are venues that are not conducive to comedy, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Brie Larson room. <laughs> are you, you going to tell me you found that room funny? Because you're laughing right now and I found nothing funny about it. No, I think there's... Patrick? Patrick, it's not a funny room. It's not a funny room. It's not funny. I think there are charming parts of that room. Well, now, I will say this, counterpoint. If they had called it funny room, wouldn't it just be like funny games? Because yes. the games in funny games aren't really funny. They're terribly cruel. Well, you can say there's something funny about this room. Yeah, like funny, like something off about this room. I'm never allowed out. <laughs> a bad sign when it comes to rooms. Now to stay here. Yeah. Anyway, that room's the worst room, right? The room? I hate that, that, that it gets room. Like, you don't own that. Let's, let's, but let's talk locally, okay? Yeah. We got two Pennsylvania natives here. What do we think are the funniest and least funny rooms in Pennsylvania? Oh, uh, least funny room. Uh, I don't know. I mean, probably not. I don't know. I'm a Cubs fan, so. Any room in Philadelphia stadiums uh, are pretty funny. Are stadiums rooms? I mean, aren't there rooms in the stadium? Locker room. Bathroom. Locker room. The locker room. Storage rooms. Oh, okay, so there used to be a jail at the bottom of the net. That sounds like not a funny room. Not a funny room. That's a great contender. Yeah. Great. I think if we, we don't have a leaderboard, but I think if we, were, if we had a board, we'd be like, that one goes up on the board. Notoriously unfunny, the jail below the vet. Yeah. Uh, uh, can we get a leaderboard up on the screen? Thank you so much. No, you're doing great. If that's the only room you think of tonight, you've contributed massively. To this. <laughs> Was there a jail below the spectrum when that existed? Because then that got two jails. That felt like a jail. <laughs> wow. Can I throw out the candidate? And I'm not the local. But can I throw out the candidate for what I think is one of the funniest rooms in Pennsylvania? Oh, I thought, okay, that's funny. Yeah. We're doing both. We're doing both. Oh, We're trying okay. to create a list of both. Okay. Comedy Sports Philadelphia, number one funniest <laughs> room. I want to put on the board a candidate okay. for number two. 
That room that that silly Liberty Bell is in. Have you seen this fucking thing? This, everything about this, this is one of the funniest bells I have ever seen. You know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I... I... <laughs> That's great. That's great, thank you. Add beer and add this Liberty Bell. Now, we did a little exploring before the show, and uh, as, as, as was mentioned before, I, I love narrative art, and there's a comic book store on the street, and we decided, let's go look at some of the comics. They had Star Wars comics, they had all kinds of comics there. But you know what they had a lot of? And I was surprised. They had a lot of issues of Craft Magazine. <laughs> and I'm just not realizing that's because that must be a big seller here in Philly. <laughs> because that bell, because that, this is not, this is not a, uh, this is not a mad magazine town. This is a crap magazine town. Now, George, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I feel like I must know. Yeah. There was another thing that comic book store had in spades. Oh. Yeah, what was that? Was anyone in this room in this comic book store earlier today? Okay, all right. Great. Was anyone the person who, when we walked in, was talking very loudly about, about the Phantom Menace? No. no, not you. Not you. He walked in literally door open. Door open. The Phantom Man is not back in the side. I didn't know if I was in heaven or I was in hell. Was it with you? Door open. I mean, Phantom Man fucking sucks, but I'll tell you this much. One time I took mushrooms, and that's the only good way to watch Phantom Man. It's so good. You know, mushrooms is so good. But like screaming. Like screaming. Oh, yeah. Just holding court in the front of this. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, they also had a lot of craft magazines. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you like comic books? Yeah. I'm not as on the up and up with the current. I don't think I'm current either. You know, I like what I like, but I grew up with just, you know, Classics Illustrated and like Dell and then later <laughs> Gold Key. You know, I'm a different generation. Yeah. I worked in a comic book store uh, throughout college. So. How was that? Um. <laughs> Do you have regulars? Definitely have regulars. They must have been chill, right? <laughs> every, yeah, every single one. Uh, the guy from Counting Crows, it was in... It was in Which guy? Gertz? Gertz? Yeah. Gertz? The guy with the fake dreadlocks? Yeah. 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 Was, uh, was that guy who made two-thirds of the Friends women? Yep. yep. <laughs> he came in, he came Never in. got Phoebe. Never got Cooper. <laughs> He came in with a, I don't know, some like young actress that was like way too young and hot for him. Like, and uh, yeah, one time he handed me his bag of groceries and was like, I have popsicles in here, so I need to be quick. It's like a Counting Crows lyric. No. No. That's how he sings. How did we get into this? We gotta be quick. No. Okay, can we dig into that? Is this a store where you were required to check your bag? It was. Okay. Yes. So he's handing it to you, <laughs> and then setting the clock on himself. <laughs> okay, he had a weekly pull list. Yes. So he was... Got a big break. <laughs> he was there to just pick up his weekly pull list. Okay, so he was putting the onus on you. Hey. Get to work. I got popsicles. Hold yeah. on. No, yes. I know. All in my exactly. He was not, I would not say, a friendly man. Wow. Uh, not openly mean or rude. Just not, not warm. Don, not can warm. we have a subsection for unfriendly <laughs> man? <laughs> yeah, there's, so, there's not enough time to listen. To <laughs> so Garrett's had a pull list? He had a pull list. I don't remember what was on it, but I think he, he got most things. No, 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 no. Don, don, don. Unfriendly. <laughs> I, I, he might be funny, but we don't know that. Don, don, don. Can you add unfunny, unfriendly slash unfunny men? And put a question mark after unfunny that you don't know. We have no sourcing on that. That's right, that he looks like he would pay paradise and drive a parking I'm trying to think if there's a funny Counting Crows song. <laughs> Being hanged around. It's like whimsical, but it's not funny. It's there's not hard the, jokes. You mean that it's not hard jokes? Uh, <laughs> maybe the least funny song in Shrek 2 is Counting Crows. Wow, that's, that's, that's a heartbreaking love. list. <laughs> yes. Right? Accidentally in love? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, let's put least funny song in Shrek 2. <laughs> 
that's its own subsection. And a matter, as a matter of fact, not, not that I want to start something, but wouldn't it be something, especially if it could never be traced back to this show, if people got into a habit of making plaques that go to an award store or one that says least funny song and track to winner Adam Duritz and just start sending them to his reps to the point where at some point the reps were like, we have to tell him. You have 45 He'll be, like, the first one they'll be like, throw it away. It's no good, it's nothing. But once they have 100, like, we have to tell him. Patrick, you said you had no idea why you brought your computer on stage? Yeah. I know why. Why? Oh, track to the soundtrack Wikipedia. Look it up, baby. <laughs> I have to this once and for all. Now, do either of you remember any song from Threat 2 that was particularly unplugged? <laughs> this is, and it's, that's, we apologize for this part feeling a lot like really hard Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'll refresh your mind. So why did he jump up? There is a, 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 what is it? I, I, I need a hero. I think the hero is sung by the cast, right? Like the uh, well, it's um, it's the uh, Jennifer Saunders. Saunders. Jennifer Saunders. Yeah. And that song's only really funny if it's Patrick singing about making another sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we got. Uh, There's a cover of "Ever Fallen in Love" by the Buzzcocks, but the cover's by Pete Yorn. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That cover. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. It's not I Need a Hero. It's, hold, it's called Holding Out. Holding Out for a Hero. Right okay, Fine. we got uh, Changes by David Bowie. Funny. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> Changes. Uh, As Lovers Go by Dashboard Confessional. Time won't change me, but I won't change time. And you know what's funny about this? This song is playing when Shrek is changing. <laughs> now, 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 here's the funniest one, I think. Fuck you, Tampa, let's say. <laughs> but this is a new list. Let's add a new fucking song. Let's make it full screen. Can we make yeah. it full screen? Or maybe the font smaller? Uh, wait, what was the one we said? The Dashboard Confessional song? Is yeah, it? As Lovers Go. We have to include that as a possibility for the Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm On My Way by Rich Price, which I think is in the first one, too. Yeah, is that's that pretty funny way? second beat. Yeah. yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I Need Some Sleep by Eels. Ever Fallen in Love by Pete Yorn. Funny! <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Little Drop of Poison by Tom Waits. Yeah. Wait, I mean, Tom Waits is playing Captain Hook at the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Funny! Yeah. yeah. Uh, You're So True by Joseph Arthur. I don't know that. People Ain't No Good by Nick Cave. Fairy Godmother Song by Jennifer Saunders. Live in La Vida Loca by Antonio Banderas and Eddie Murphy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Funny. That's the funniest. Yeah. And then hold it out for a Euro bonus track by Jennifer Saunders. Who here got film strips from Beverly Hills Cop 3 before the... That's great. That was a movie Eddie and I did together in the 90s <laughs> with uh, criminal filmmaker John Landis. <laughs> if you didn't get a film strip, look around your chair because you, you did. Yeah, if you didn't get one, look around because Ian did. Yeah, did. <laughs> Have uh, you ever seen Beverly Hills Cop 3? No, I've only seen the first one. Okay, well, George, have you seen it? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if I've really even seen the first one. Well, maybe George could reprise his performance from Beverly Hills. Yeah. Well, first, I'll, your first, I'll set the scene. Because this might. You don't know if you haven't seen it. You're like, I don't think I haven't seen it. Yeah, jog my memory, please. <laughs> <laughs> are waiting in line for a, uh, an amusement park ride at Wonder World. Uh, it's a fictional amusement park. Um, and uh, policeman Axel Foley uh, cuts in line. The That's, titular Beverly Hills Cop yeah, 3. Yeah, he's, the, he's, he's the Beverly Hills Cop 3. Yes. And he cuts in line to like uh, commandeer 
the ride. Do you for, want me to play at so poorly with this help if you have something to react to, George? Uh, a little Be bit. Be careful with this one. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, hold on. I'm going to have Butter Bear be um, AM radio Butter Bear. A new uh, character. We'll play my female companion. Hold on. Who knew the best Tatum in the building would be Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum, who had to fill in for Commissioner. All right. <laughs> okay, ready? All right. Okay, lips, teeth, tip of the toe. Lips, tip of the toe. Okay, ready? Yeah. Excuse me, I'm cutting in line. Hey! <laughs> also, was, wow, your uh, trunk is covered in cheese. <laughs> 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 oh, there's some napkins back there. I got napkins over here. Okay. <laughs> All over. Yeah. There you go. You got this one. Trumpy. Oh, there we go. George, look at you. Yeah, that's me in the movie. I'm wearing a. a uh, a Wonder World shirt. Yeah. What's saying that pig again? Uh, the cartoon pig. Uh. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, and see, we're in a relationship. <laughs> but she's she's not unhappy because she's with me. She's unhappy because we were we're supposed to be next on the ride. It's very believable. I see you two together. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You, you look great. Yeah, I did a Linda Ronstadt, too. <laughs> that I don't see so much. But this is my yeah. I do all right. Um, <laughs> he's married now. He's married no, now. Right? He's staying no, in right. your house. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. I don't, don't want to open up a whole can of worms, but do you think you'd do better than Adam Durst? Of the County Chris. Oh, Adam Duritz, not the Durst, not a relative of, of uh, Robert Durst. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. I definitely think well, I did it depends what Adam Durtz Durst, Adam Duritz. Um no, I think we probably are at this around the same level. I think I'm I think it's reasonable. <laughs> I think it's, you think you say better than. You didn't give any other qualifiers beyond that? What do you mean? She said, do you think you'd be better than Adam Burst? Do, do I think I did better than Adam Burst? You know, young, attractive actresses, whatnot. I mean, um, I'm, no, I'm no rock and roll singer. I'm just a storyteller. I've never seen you. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of hit records. It's had a lot of hit records. Long December, the reason to blame. Prescott Pig. What? Prescott Pig. <laughs> what are you calling me? <laughs> Shirt. His name is Prescott Pig. Oh, in Beverly Hills, South Three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. <laughs> Shan, did you see the Beverly Hills? You said you saw the first one. I've seen the first one. What did you think of it? Yeah, it's good. I like his Detroit Lions jacket. It's good jacket. Yeah, it's good jacket. Are you a Detroit Lions fan? Yeah, I'm sure you're going to admit that to a group of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really sad life, I think. Don, can we add another subsection? Good jackets? <laughs> you know what's funny about Beverly Hills Cop? <laughs> <laughs> he, and by he I mean the cop. <laughs> He's in Beverly Hills. Uh, uh, right. But that's not where he's from. Uh, 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 right. Fish out of water. Fish out of water. Or cop out of Detroit. That's right. <laughs> the tag line. Yeah. Fish out of water or yeah. cop out of Detroit. I don't want to get too political, but sometimes people are like, they don't know how to have political conversations. And mm -hmm. here's this kind of like a fun icebreaker if you want to get into a political conversation with someone. If someone's uh, saying, all cops are bastards, here's what you can say to them, even the Beverly Hills cop? <laughs> <laughs> Axel Foley? That's like that. He did all right for himself. And I'm not saying that that's the correct response. I'm just saying I think the conversation that will follow will be more interesting. Yes. And it'd be more interesting than if you didn't say that in response. Oh, so if you, if you went up to 100 people and you said, Give me one word to describe Axel Foley. Two words, three words. I don't think you'd hear bastard. If a lot of people call him a little stinker. <laughs> That's right. If you yeah. like three words, you call him Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, and they say, 
Well, what about four words? I say Beverly Hills Cop Three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if someone says Back to Blue, then you say the same thing. Then you say, uh, you, I hope you're including Axel Foley. In that. <laughs> because these conversations are so divisive. And these are just little tips to help avoid making these conversations so uncomfortable. This is like Thanksgiving advice. Yeah, this is great for Thanksgiving when <laughs> these fights start erupting. Just have Axel, Axel Foley in your back pocket conversationally. Imagine you have a little one-inch Axel Foley hanging out in your back pocket, ready to be pulled down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we brought another friend uh, to the show. We don't often introduce Rotten Ronnie. Um, oh. oh, yeah? Well, we're getting, we're getting a little political, so I can feel... I can feel... Now, explain Rotten Ronnie to the other story. Rotten Ronnie was... Uh, there was a, a, a British television show in the 80s uh, called Spit Image, where it was uh, political satire with puppets. Weird and puppets. Weird puppets. Grotesque-looking puppets. And one of their puppets was Ronald Reagan, and they merchandised what happened. <laughs> We're starting the show again. All right. Lotto? Back to Lotto. Um, so they made this merchandise in the 80s, and uh, this one just, it's just what happens, you know? I mean, this happened to the real Reagan, you know? <laughs> this is a, we're all going to end Someone up. is walking out. They said, oh, don't you dare. How dare you. Disrespect Ronald. How dare you. He was the gipper. Also, is that sort of happening to him while he was still in office? Yeah, this is like second term Reagan. Um, what do we think about politics and comedy, huh? It's tricky, right? But we like it. Yeah, it pays my bills, so I have to like it. Yeah. Uh, what What do you find? Were you always political in your comedy? No, not at all. I kind of uh, just stumbled into the late night political comedy kind of sphere. Um, I was on the debate team in high school. Uh, captain, actually, I got a varsity letter. Whoa! I, I, Captain. What's that? I said, I, I, Captain. <laughs> thank you. I, thank I you. didn't realize I was speaking to someone of a higher rank. <laughs> and we were not showing the proper respect. We have a captain here. You can just call me Master Commander. It's fine. We don't need to be a Master Commander. You know? You're it's, a it's a lower rank, as I understand it. What was a debate that you feel like you did well in? And what was a debate that you feel you could have done better in? And it's okay if you say. I don't remember. I, don't I remember, remember being uh, being very like uh, before I could even vote in high school, being a very like liberal-minded Democrat. But my my best friend like named her dog Reagan. So that's <laughs> that's the situation. And this was you know this was what, what, just when it was like you could reach across the aisle, you know, <laughs> before politics right. really got political. Tip O'Neill. Yeah. And you'd reach across the aisle. Yeah. Are you, you know, Allison, are you gonna tell her that you saw Ronnie tonight? Um, we're no longer friends, okay. so uh, fuck her. All right. Right. It does sound like a good a, a good one-liner for a, like a Wonder Years style sitcom, like two young best friends, one's a liberal, yeah. one's a conservative, but they're the best of friends. I guess it's kind of like Fox and the Hound, right? Yeah, we're like the lady and the tramp we meet in the middle of the they're, city. But they're yeah. lovers. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, they, those two dogs love each other. They fucking love each other. You yeah. don't be squealing like that with a friend. Yeah. He's just my daughter. He's right. I didn't know that. Yeah, whereas Fox and the Hound, like, they obviously are important to each other, but there is no heat. <laughs> no, if the Fox goes, hey, how about, do we want to get small plates so we can share the portions? Let's get two forks. Yeah. Take turns at the spaghetti. <laughs> Yeah. I think we were somewhere, but in terms of friendship level, probably somewhere between Fox and the Hound and Lady and the Tramp. It was a very close mm-hmm. friendship. It's a great pitch. <laughs> I think you can sell that. I have tried several times, and I can't. I'm Fox and the Tramp. Fox and the Tramp. <laughs> Lady and the Hound. Yes. Yeah. Shannon, what do you what do you what do you what do you think is is the ideal uh, pair of uh, cartoon animals? <laughs> Either friends or lovers, like who comes to mind? That's that's great. Um, I really like the bunnies. I one's a bunny, I think. I don't know who the other one is. In Toy Story Four. Oh, oh Ducky and Bunny. Ducky and Bunny. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty great. They're good guys. They're good guys. Yeah. yeah. They're they're pals. There's a. I think I think there's 
there's more heat between them than there is between Fox and Hound. Todd and Copper. <laughs> Todd and Copper, I, I would be stunned if anything happened. <laughs> you know? Like, I would be, like, if you told me, guess, guess who got together. Yeah. I know it wasn't Todd and Copper. You said Ducky and Bunny first. What? You said Ducky and Bunny I said Ducky and Bunny? Yeah. Blake and Tramp? No. Not Todd and Copper. No. You're kidding. I'm not. I'm not. Just do you like it. It's also funny at that moment, Disney was like, okay, we got to cast two of our brightest stars in this thing. <laughs> Young Kurt Russell will play the virile fox. And who should play the hound? Mikiru. <laughs> Like, they're both supposed to be, like, 15. I, and I think that is, I'm realizing now that is entirely why, because that is late stage Mickey Rooney and very young Kurt Russell. Yes. No heat. No. No one ships them. But Ducky and Bunny, yeah. Absolutely. Ducky, but they fight, too. There's a little heat. Oh, it's, yeah. It's spicy. Sometimes the conversation is a little spicy. Yeah. I can imagine a fight that then turned into something else. I could, too. Most great romances start out this uh, wrestling match, right? Wada, did you ever have a crush on any of the other Star Wars characters? Who didn't I have a crush on? <laughs> you kidding me? Look, I mean, uh, late at night, you're stuck on a hard drive with some other CGI. Hey, you doing Hey, George. What? I did go to fanfiction.net. Um, yeah? Some people do like Todd and Comedy. <laughs> I just want to read the, the blurb. All right. Uh, <laughs> I just want to read the first blurb first. I don't think this one is a romance one. Uh, it's called Fox and the Hound 3, Alternate Timeline. <laughs> this story will take place in an alternate timeline of the events of the first movie where Todd sees Copper for the first time when they're older and will be a crossover of the plot of the Scarface movie. <laughs> Wait, so, okay, Scarface, this is the De Palma Scarface, yes? I, I, I don't think it's the, uh, the 1920s one, no. Right. So that, that is mostly set in Miami, right? Uh, yeah. Fox and the Hound is where? Is somewhere in Appalachia? Yeah, there. Yeah, where is it? Can we get a setting on Fox and the Hound? Okay. Yeah, sure, but can I Does anyone know offhand? That looks like Miami Woods. That's not Miami. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good comedy, sir. Thank you. <laughs> hey, this is a funny room. <laughs> I said it right out the top. Look at, honestly, look at the, 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 the hound has pinned the fox. Oh, yeah, let's make that picture big. <laughs> down, 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 down. I was going to say the but playful there's, splash. There, but there's no heat that. I mean, uh, look at some of our eyes. That is spicy. It's innocent, though. That's when they're children. Patrick? Yes. I got the question for yes. you. Yes. Is this story, before you go any further, mm -hmm. Is it marked SFW or is it marked MSFW? It is, I, I specifically filtered all the ones to be rated M. So this is not safe. This is MSFW. Okay, let's let's lower the lights here. I can't read all of it. It's 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 fifteen thousand words. I can't read all. Okay, some choice. I turned the okay. right light on. Come on. All right. Things this one is awesome. All right. This one is called If I Never Knew You. Todd and Copper had always been friends, but two wishes they could be more. She finally found the perfect mate, Cash, but he left Dixie for someone who sings. And since she's pregnant, he's pretty much useless. And now, that's the, that's the tagline thing. Uh, <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll always be friends, won't we, Tom said? In the days and months to come, when Copper would learn how to hunt, when Todd would pretend that the odd pain inside of him wasn't there, Always would seem much shorter than it had when the hound was just a hopeful puppy and the fox would cut his ears. Patrick, we're getting some feedback on the mic from your hand waving. Please keep your hand at your side. But all that mattered in that moment, the world was a playground, and being out in the trail meant curiously following the scent was that Copper was Todd's best friend and Todd was Copper's, and no one, not even Big Mom or Chief, would ever change that. If it had been a dream, it would have been simpler. Jeez. <laughs> Todd could be standing on one side in front of him and the master on the other, and then Copper could follow one path or the other completely guilt-free. But the hound never had that. <laughs> Instead, he had trailed behind both, 
sometimes running towards Todd and sometimes toward the master. I'll just I'll finish this last sentence. But the road no, don't finish yet. <laughs> but, the, but the road got wider and wider and eventually branched one to the left and one to the right, slowly leading farther from one another. And as the distance engulfed him, he howled one last time for a friendship doomed since it began and followed on. Big Mama was a religious woman. <laughs> Big Mama's the owl. Right? So far as owls go. Yeah, for really. <laughs> and coincidences were nothing, but owls kept working in mysterious ways. I don't know what this, any of this means. He had his reasons, she knew, and there were good ones for placing Todd in the midst of all their lives. He was placed in her life to replace the owlets long since gone. He was there to help ease Widow Tweed's loneliness and give her something to love. And he was there to ease Dink and Boomer's obsessive focus on that damn caterpillar. Now Dink and Boomer, they have heat. <laughs> I also just want to make sure the audience uh, notices that uh, George did not partake in the cheesesteak, but he wanted to try a local delicacy. He is currently eating strawberry-flavored Philadelphia cream cheese off the blade of the peanuts. <laughs> this is triggering some like really bad sense memories. <laughs> what? It's it did not... used to happen at the comic book store. <laughs> uh, no, that was in New York where we were strictly only allowed to eat New York style cream cheese. Uh -huh. Which uh, New York comic book store? Uh, it was St. Mark's Comics. Oh, it was that makes it seem more. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's now in uh, Industry City. Gotcha. 2.0. No one cares. <laughs> no, I, I don't think. Was that a, a apathy? Was that a, the silence of apathy? Yeah, there's a moment of silence. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> How's that cream cheese going down your throat? It's a lot. <laughs> you know, it's pungent. You can, you can, can you in the front row smell it? You also eat a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> We went to Target to try to find a local delicacy. We had been trying to convince George to eat cream cheese. He said, I don't want to eat cream cheese. And then we walked down the aisle and he went, Oh, I would eat strawberry flavor. That's like the game changer. He said, There's no way I'm eating cream cheese on stage until it's fruit flavor. I said, I said Do you want any crackers or anything? And he yelled at me. <laughs> he said, If it's strawberry, I don't need crackers. <laughs> You feel better now? <laughs> now that you told that story, Patrick? <laughs> I'm not going to finish reading this, but I do want to say there's an edit at the bottom mm -hmm. that says edit. I put a little Dink and Boomer in there. <laughs> uh, let's make that a shirt. <laughs> I have a feeling that that's the kind of shirt that makes the wrong kind of sense in a way that you can imagine people saying, sir, you have to leave. Like, Why? It's like your shirt, no one knows what it means, but everyone's concerned. Have, have either of you ever written any kind of fan fiction? Is that the thing either of you? Because both, both of you write. I'm like, you know, spec scripts are a form of fan fiction. Sometimes when you're trying to just get your miles in. Have you ever, have you ever explored in someone else's Intellectual property. What do you say all that? I mean, yeah, I've written the spec scripts. I wrote, I wrote a Parks and Rec one with my friend Aubrey, who is here. Plaza? Yeah. She's yeah. on the yeah. show! Yes, Aubrey Plaza and I are very good friends. She's from Delaware. Um, so that actually could be true. <laughs> Can you give us the log line of your Parks and Rec spec? And did you call it a, a, a rec spec? Parks and spec. Yeah, Parks and spec. I don't remember what it was about. Aubrey, what was it about? I have no clue. Great. Great. We don't know. That's why we didn't. That's why we're not professional. Was it funny? Probably not. No. Great. Okay. All right, we'll find out and let it out. Great. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait while you... Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out now. We have no part out. <laughs> Do you remember any a character who might have been in it? Like a main character? I mean, I'll Was Leslie? Leslie Nope in it? <laughs> I think we put them in it, yeah. Was Ron Clark's move? Was Ron Swanson in it? I'm going to say yeah. Was April Ludgate in it? Yeah. I was going to say, oh, yes. What about little Sebastian? 
Probably. Was Mark Brandanowitz in it? Fuck no. Hey, see? You dig a little deeper and you have strong feelings in that season one. Yeah, why? Hey. No heat for Brandanowitz. Oh, yeah, none. Absolutely none. Yeah. Fox and the Hound kind of Fox and the Hound heat. Yeah. I, I consider myself a Brand Stanowitz. Oh, <laughs> But this is more like the He wasn't leaving. Yeah, he wasn't right for Leslie. I agree. He wasn't right for Anne either. He wasn't right for Anne. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah, that's why you got rid of him. That's why he got rid of him. She is furious. That would punch him shit on Red Dance. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Uh, but you don't, you don't, you don't like spec scripts. I, I haven't written. I feel like spec scripts have kind of like, I don't know about you, but they're like sort of like people just want to see original pilots yeah. these days. But I, I did the first script that I ever wrote, and it was a spec script for Brooklyn Nine Nine, and mm, I I've read it since yeah. I wrote it. I'm sure it's awful. <laughs> right. Maybe it's really good. I doubt it, but I appreciate you saying. That. Do you remember any of the characters in it? Because I've been them. Was Ron Swanson? Was Mark Brandon? Was Brandon Swanson? Was Mark Brandon? Yeah, Mark Brandon. Yeah. I was like, I was like, you know what? I think he was just in the wrong ensemble. More <laughs> people should do that. Someone's got to pick him up on those. Doesn't it feel like you know how like there was the Mary Tyler Moore Moore show and then they made Lou Grant? Doesn't it feel like Brandanowitz could be like a, a drama? Yes. It's like it's like he's just like he used to work in city government, but now he does whatever this is. Yeah, to be fair, like the complaint was this guy's not very funny in the cast of Parks and Rec. And like, maybe he's good at his job. Maybe he put him on an hour long drama yeah. where he gets shit done. Or it's just like the Brandanowitz mysteries. That sounds like a show, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a procedural. He solves I, think, I think any character should be up for grab if the show decides they don't want them. <laughs> They're like a free agent. Yeah, you make like a Mandy show from the West Wing. You make the Brand You just you scoop them all up. I feel like even in the Brand show, like he wouldn't be really the title character. It would be yeah, funny if after one season, the Brand Danowitz mystery is like, says, let's get rid of Brand The mysteries. The mysteries. There's not a lot of heat between Brand and the premise of the show. <laughs> George, what you got there? I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> when and where did you buy this? I don't remember. <laughs> Was it Target? No. He just has so much money. I can't kill I can't. It's true. You have no. I don't want to complain about that. But there's a point where you get so much money that you don't know what it is. George, this is a safe space. I think if there's ever been a crowd that would let you complain about being oh. a billionaire, it's here tonight. It's too much money. It's too much. Like, who here has billions of dollars? Oh, wait, there's a ghost here. Hold on. Hold on. Is this place? Hold on. Is this place haunted? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Because I just heard a spirit. George, what's the worst thing about being a billionaire? Um, where to put it? <laughs> you know, I like I like those Scrooge McDuck comics where he builds a big money bin. Mm. You can't do that. I do like the fact that most of my money is digital. Because I'm a big digital guy. I love the idea. Not good what? No. Hey, I Actual money. <laughs> Actual money. If I want to play a video game, I'll 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 play a LucasArts game. You know? <laughs> Okay, so we got an unboxing here. An unpubbing, at least. Well, I guess this is... T okay, hold on. It's on the back. What do you mean? What's on the back? Like, on the back of the... Um, I did, it's the on the dead lid. No, it's trying to roll through this. No, yeah, there you go. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, no, I broke him. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, who wants this? <laughs> Who wants it? This guy. You. Yeah. Yeah. Just because I saw you. In your Wano hat. Look at your Wano hat. Be careful. Wow. Yeah. And who's the guy? You have, you have the green duct tape on your hat, of course, so it can stick to the wall. What, what does it say? You wrote something on the front? It says, This is my sequel hat. Hey. hey. <laughs> who's the person who said, This guy? Me. 
Hey. All right, this guy, come up here. I'll give you the empty thing. <laughs> Hold on. Did you get a film strip? I did. You want a second one? I'll put it inside the thing. Watch. I'll put this in. Never tell anyone what's on this one. <laughs> I also put this is a wrapper. <laughs> <garbage. laughs> no, garbage and garbage. And look, a tiniest little bit of the. Play Dough. Well, no, it's a oh, softy dough. <laughs> I don't think I want it anymore. Really? I do. Don't lie to Uncle George. <laughs> softy dough is just off putting. Softy dough is just off putting. Sounds like a counting crow's lyric. <laughs> No, just stop putting. Oh wait, there's more garbage. Why are we all watching now? Are we binging things? What's you binging? What you binging? What you binging? What you binging? Watto was talking a lot on the drive up. Watto is obsessed with the offer. Yeah. Watto has become fully offer pig. I know. I think I'm in the background of that. You are. You and Marsha. Yeah, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> yeah, the, there's, because uh, my mentor turned uh, employee Francis uh, as a big character. Yeah. Uh, I, I started out sort of like, doing second unit stuff, helping him out, and then eventually I was executive producer on Tucker, the Man in His Dream. And I made him, I made him, yeah, right? You like Tucker? Yeah. <laughs> It's a good movie. Who here has not seen Tucker the Man in His Dream? <laughs> it's a really good movie. Don't be put off by the fact that it's also the name of the worst thing on television now. I just want to try. Boo's Billionaires <laughs> applauds Tucker the Man in His Dream. Boo's people who haven't seen Tucker the Man in His Dream. It's something like an interesting song. Oh. He also laughed at one of my jokes very hard, so I'm pro this guy. <laughs> Which yeah, wait, which joke of yours? I don't remember. Wow, what a way to build an act. <laughs> the first laugh you ever get and you forget the joke. <laughs> you cut to 80 years later, you have nothing. You're not leaving me anything? What? You're not leaving me anything? No, it's all going to the museum and charity and... <laughs> What am I doing here? <laughs> hey, Patrick, Patrick, how's the open mic going? I can't remember. <laughs> Working out the material at the club? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Not me. The <laughs> boss? Don't look at me anymore. Why not? <laughs> all right. We should all look. Let's all look at Patrick. <laughs> Everyone look at Patrick. <laughs> What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> I hope you remember that. Do you remember the joke that he did that you left out? It's all been so funny. Right? Wow, he just got washed away. <laughs> <laughs> just a drop in the comedy ocean. I made eye contact with him and said thank you. And he does not even remember it. Patrick and his joke. Let's uh, we, let's visualize this meme. Just someone just pouring a bucket into the ocean. <laughs> Firing a squirt gun at the ocean. And he labeled the droplets Patrick's joke. You remember everything but the joke. You remember that he laughed, you remember that he made eye contact, you remember that you said thank you. I think it was, oh, I know what it was. Was it me bringing up Mandy from the West Wing? That was it. Oh. It wasn't even a good joke. No, no it's useless. It was barely a joke. That joke, the only place you might have a shot with that would be like in nursing homes in a decade. I'll see you there. Oh, I won't be here in a decade. <laughs> oh, um, I'm sorry for saying that now. <laughs> my, my desire to win just made me very sad. <laughs> Uh, so what's your vision? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I've been rewatching a lot of Breaking Bad. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, are you a Better Call Saul person? Yeah. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They uh, I, I, apparently they submitted like seven of their episodes for Emmy nominations, which <laughs> like no, like you submit one. Why? Right. But I don't know. I think they deserve them all. Yeah. Good shows. They make good shows. You like El Camino? Yeah. 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 I I, I like only I, I feel like after I finish Breaking Bad, I'll go ahead and rewatch that. The Butter Boy song, is that anything? <laughs> what are you spoofing? Butter Boy song. The butter call song? The butter call song. Butter, 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 butter salt song. Like butter like call baby. salt. Make what? me hungry, whatever you're saying. George, can we some giveaways? Should we give those away? Uh huh. Yeah. How do you want to do it? Well, who is a huge fan of The Mandalorian? Let's devise a contest based on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? You seen that? Oh, you're wearing a Baby Yoda uh, shirt. You you're a fan of that one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you like Baby Yoda? Or you I hate do. Him? He's smart. Have you met Baby? <laughs> He's like Baby Yoda, but he makes bad deals and then gets shot. <laughs> Spoilers, hasn't happened yet. That still won't run as long, though. Never uh, What do you think is a good way? Because I, I have a, a, a prize that would be really cool for someone who's a big fan of The Mandalorian. What's a fun way? Sometimes we do... Did anyone here come dressed in a costume? Probably not. Oh, who? All right. Watch over here. Watch over here. Are you a big Mandalorian fan? Of course. You shook your head no, though. You said no. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Try again. Try again. Yeah. Try again. Like, you... Yes. The people are way better. So. I mean, again. Yeah. I love Mandalorian, but. You got about seven different, different things going on. Can we do a quick round? That's a little fashion okay. show. I'm not what? trying to put you on blast, but. And Blanco, I also believe, is that a Bring the Noise shirt you're wearing? Yes. Okay, so we got, got Watto Cup, Cup. a Fendi Sinorless hat, <laughs> Watto Nose, and Wings. The shirt. Is Watto in the style of Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> then you have an Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade fan yes. attack. <laughs> Look, you're taking more props. You got a glue. Oh, yeah. you got a glue. What does your name tag say? Oh. On the shirt, about there, yes. That's the bad name. Okay. <laughs> Great. I count that as a bit. <laughs> The buttons. You have some, you have some pins. Yeah. What are the shorts? Is anything funny going on with the shorts? <laughs> shorts are kind of funny in another yeah. show. Yeah, the first film I made was a short. <laughs> but it's a funny short. Yeah. Also true. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> I want to ask you something that might take a lot. <laughs> what? I don't know. This is a this is a, a sacrifice, but I think this is your ask, fan. I think you should burn it. What? It's a big ask, but I think yes. you should burn it. I have a prize for you, but I'm going to put you in the same kind of situation that Jedi Master Luke Skywalker <laughs> put Baby Yoda Grogu in. You made him make a terrible choice. You have brought a Butter Girl Bell to Philadelphia, the town that loves nothing more than crack a bell. <laughs> CD soundtrack to Swingers, written and directed by Tom <laughs> Will you crack the bell? <laughs> now let's do this safely. Let's yeah, do yeah, it. First, we need the answer because we're not gonna we're not gonna rush you and crack that bell. If you if you say no, I didn't. I turned down <laughs> the once in a lifetime oh, opportunity to acquire. <laughs> An authentic, original release, compact disc, motion picture soundtrack from the the man behind the Mando. Now, I know how tough this must be for Blog, because Blog, big fan of the show, right? Yes. yes. But Blog, I'm sure, also loves that button bell. Is it worth a lot of money? No, you can get one. It's so easy. <laughs> Let's, can you look up how much, what's the cheapest one on eBay right now? Yeah. Versus it, it, swingers on CD is very hard. You're... <laughs> well, what, 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 what,
Uh, but also, also, think about this, just for one second. What are the odds you're going to be walking around near a place that sells used CDs with like five or six dollars in your pocket? You went for five dollars. Like, you know? Five dollars, five ninety five shipping. The, wait, the bell? The bell? For the, the bell. bell. For the bell. Where did you get that one, though? Oh, eBay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, so let's ask you. gave it to you. No. On her deathbed. Right. No, you have the Butter Girl Bell because you love this show. Yeah. And now this show is asking you. <laughs> how? Yeah. How? Is there anyone here who believes? Hang on. Oh, here we wait. go. Here we go. Okay, guys. This this his name is Dave. We're calling him Billy, Billy Dave. Dave. Now come on, come on. If I had a hammer, it'd be right here. Now I have a bucket. We have like a chisel. <laughs> like a chisel. I also have safety glasses. <laughs> also, Nikki would love to be a part of this. Like, Nikki would love nothing more than to help cut the butter. <laughs> 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 we would not be damaging the butter bell. We'd be creating blockbuster new character, <laughs> Butter Liberty Bell. <laughs> The one and only. One and only made in a place that's so rich with history. Blog, I'll buy you a new one. <laughs> <laughs> no, Patrick, don't take. Don't okay, take blog, I won't buy you a new one. I lost it. Don't take this moment of heroism. This choice must have meaning. The hero's journey. Have you not read your Joseph Campbell? <laughs> Daddy Warbucks here wants to wants to just take all meaning out of this heroic moment. Well, you gotta figure this one out. You gotta figure out how to yeah. But like, yeah. show the audience. You know. Show the audience. Maybe, maybe. Yes, yes. Yeah. Safety first. There we go. This is good. This is good. And also, we don't want you to destroy the butter bell. Yeah. Ideally, you would just want to crack it. Just a little bitty crack. Just a little bitty crack. Maybe do it down in the, in the... Water. <laughs> Also, maybe do it down like into the bucket. Maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, use the bag? Use the back. The back might be better. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, it's cracked it out. Oh, 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 Liberty, 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 liberty. More, more crack. You've seen the real liberty law. It's not a chipped bell. Oh, blog. He's so mad. He's so mad. Liberty, 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 liberty. Oh. Emu, emu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 For liberty. Wow. Thank you, God. You want you. the pieces? No. Okay. <laughs> you want? Do you want the rest of my cream cheese? Oh, also this. Yeah. Now, George, should we? Thank you. Should we do the? Let's oh yeah. This. Let's do that. Lord Dolan was kind enough to make uh, shirts for uh, the three of us, the the Wato Wawa shirt, but also created some extras to give out to members of the audience. Right? Yeah. How do we do this? How do we do this? <laughs> Hot dog gun? <laughs> Don? Hot dog gun? Dave. Dave? Do you know how to build a hot dog gun? <laughs> I think that your first thought was not a t-shirt gun. It's a t-shirt gun. <laughs> no, no, not at all. For those of you who are familiar with Jersey Dave, who's a recurring uh, character on the show. <laughs> Billy Dave, it's kind of extraordinary. You know the first time you saw The Mandalorian, you're like, is that Boba Fett? And then you're like, no, it's not Boba Fett. It's just the same. It's just like... <laughs> Wow. Billy Dave is like you've come to another town and it's just like every town has you have to find there's like one Dave. He said he says he said George what kind of uh, mic stand do you want? George said do you have a small one I could put on the desk? And he literally went like this. No, but hang on. And he ran off and he built he that. Built this. He built that. You're missing a step. What? What was the step missing? The step we're missing is he went, hang on. And he disappeared and then we heard like <laughs> now, now let's be quiet. Hold on. There was one thing he said. There was one flaw in this one. 
<laughs> he said, everyone be, everyone be absolutely quiet, no laughter, this is not a funny noise. Here we looked at George and he said, there's only one problem with this. Try not to shake it around, because it makes this funny noise. And George's eyes lit up. <laughs> Don, can we have a subsection that says not funny noises? <laughs> well, and this is the thing. I was the executive producer on the movie Body Heat. Yes. But I took my name off of it. Too sexy. Because I said, sexy is not my brand. And this noise is too sexy. <laughs> I can see the box stop, now. Stop making direct eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Should we have some pie? Yes. Yeah. Shannon brought this pie. It's not for you, it's for the people on stage. There's not enough. We didn't, like, Shannon, do you want to explain the backstory of you deciding to bring the pie? Oh, sure. Okay, so um, Patrick and George uh, were on an adventure in uh, California. Where I got my little baby. And they went this, um, and they went to House of Pies, mm -hmm. which in theory sounds like it should be delicious, right? It's a house of pies. You want what? pies? You Go want, there. Right. Apparently, it was very bad. And pie is delicious, and that makes me very sad. So I brought them a strawberry pie. It was very bad. George, can I tell the whole story? Yeah, tell the whole story. Okay, so we we got there, and then we said, let's go get a slice of pie. So we got there, and the guy goes, you know, it's like two dollars more to buy the full pie. And I said, always oh, a good sign. Always a great sign. I said, okay, that's fine. I'll give it to uh, the people I'm staying with. That's like a thank you, you know. And then we thought it was funny that. They'd get a pie, but there's two giant slices of this in front of it. George was watching the guy as he brought the rest of the pie out, and the way he described it to me was it looked like he had put on gloves to carry the pie because his hand was red. This was a strawberry cream pie. And then George said, we, we were, he thought we were not looking, much like how a samurai cleans off his blade like this. He wiped it off and his hand was normal. He had stuck his thumb in the pie George didn't tell me until I was almost done with my slice. I for the pie. Yeah. I didn't eat very much of my pie because I'm not a thumb guy. Uh, I'm not funny about this. I, hang on, I ate the whole thing, and then we finished the pie throughout the week. So it was... I didn't finish that. I, I uh, only I had a little bit of pie. It's terrible. Okay, so right now I have four pieces. I'm gonna cut, and then it's gonna, then we're gonna have more pieces than we need, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, the thing I found funniest was you uh, tweet about how bad the experience with the pie was, and, and like every LA local native tweets at you and says, "Yeah, of course, don't order the pies at House of Pies." Everyone knows that. The most engagement I've gotten in years. On Twitter. <laughs> you fucking idiot! Why do you think we should order a pie at House of Pies? Don't you know better? I mean, I I live in a world where if you put something in the name, like yeah, get your sound mixed at Skywalker Sound. You don't like you don't want it to be like don't get your audio dealt with there. They don't do sound, that's Skywalker Sound. Like, you, if you do well with the thing, that's why you put the name in it. Yeah. It's, it's like if you called the movie Star Wars and then you're disappointed that there was a lot of land peace in it. <laughs> you're like, yeah, everyone knows Star Wars is about land peace. <laughs> Fucking horror. <laughs> what are you, fresh off the bus? I've, I've had some of the food at House of Pie, and I, I don't know if they do anything well. <laughs> <laughs> Argue. They were pretty good at upselling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, let's figure out these shirts. How do we hear about these shirts? Because I want to. Can, Allison, can you count? See how many shirts we got in there? Or blog? Do you know? Uh, five. There's five. five. Okay. Five shirts. I've had something I've never heard before. Okay, I don't know where you can buy. Um, five. five. All right. <laughs> Who? wants a shirt. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. If you would like a shirt, stand up. Okay, now George, let's do this. Let's ask questions until people start sitting down. And Patrick, so we know it's 
mistake here. What are the sizes yes. of the five shirts? Can we, can we get the size? They're all XL. They're all XL. Okay. Okay. So we lost. Yes, we lost if you don't want an XL shirt. Doesn't mean it has to be your size. Yeah. Yeah, because XL, if, if XL is too big, you can be like a lounge around the house, like a really roomy, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. you know? Or, or it could be tight and sexy. Yeah, super tight and super sexy. <laughs> or if you have a tiny bed, you could turn it into a duvet. <laughs> All right. Now, these are made by Prim Noise, sympathetic <laughs> anger on Instagram. She made, she made my shirt on her own house and talked about a little twist and said, don't say twist on it. Best in the best. Best in the best. Um, all right, George, what's a question we can uh, get some of these nerds to sit down? All right. You have to be honest, because I might quiz you. And be honest with yourself as well. Yes. Yeah. Remain standing. If you have watched the, the motion picture Strange Magic on Disney+. Plus. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. What? Tell us a little bit, a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. Tell us one song that they sing. That is not yeah. Strange Magic. It's not Strange Magic. Yeah. I don't know what it would be for girls. Whoa. I believe it. Tell us, yeah. no, tell, us, <laughs> tell us a little bit. When did you watch it? Uh, so after you announced it that it was available on Disney Plus, I yeah. watched it. Great. Yeah. What was your favorite part? Uh, I spent about 10 minutes watching it. <laughs> it's longer than 10 minutes. Can I also say, yeah. Strange Magic knocked a lot of people out of the competition for this show. We <laughs> just someone raising their hand, though. Can I stand up? Because I didn't stand up before, but I have actually seen Get it. Yeah! 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 <laughs> what's, what's your favorite part? Oh, uh, God, the weird bit at the end where they fall in love? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there, and here's the thing. I don't know whether she's lying, but I, she's like selling it. So, you know what I mean? I just you know that you know that a ten minute a ten minutes is not captured. We watch it on the show. That is true. We do watch it on the show one time. Yeah, I trust why, you. Why? I trust you too. Why did you sit down? Why did you give him the business? No, I didn't. I didn't. All right. What's, what's your favorite part of it? I don't remember any of it. That's also very much proof that you watch it. <laughs> Who's out there who's playing some live shirts? Love that shirt! Whoa! Okay, okay, but now we need something. You've seen it, seen it twice. I like a Maya Rudolph sings. Okay, great. Yeah, that counts. No one would lie about seeing it twice. Now, when George, George and I saw it in theaters, I mean, George had already seen it, of course, because he hated it. Why was there? <laughs> Okay, well, I was there too. And we were with a group of, uh, you know, uh, retired filmmakers and comedians in their 20s and 30s. And the only other people in the theater was a seven year old girl's birthday. <laughs> How was it? And it sort of had the energy of the seven-year-old girl turning to her friends and going, Hey, sorry, what are you going to do about a January birthday? <laughs> so thank you. Um, I just want to say, look, we don't have time to uh, call attention to everyone who wanted the shirt that had not yet watched Strange Magic. I know, I do just want to say one of the people who stood up originally saying they want the shirt. Yeah. Right here in the front row. They've never seen George Lucas talk show before. Oh. So you, this is the first time you've seen this, but you've seen Strange Magic. No, I haven't. No, I just oh. sat down for Strange Magic, but she wanted the fucking well, what else is this? What else is it? Are you guys together? Yeah, we're yeah. great. Great. I, I know, Eric. How have you avoided watching this show? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think she gets one, George. I think so. Well, here's the thing. Do you think... Do you, are you liking the show? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. You haven't fallen asleep. Ah, thank you. What's your favorite George Lucas movie? Wow. <laughs> There's so many other people up here. Yeah, I want to remind you, it's not the George shirt you're putting your baby in front of It's the fucking Watto shirt. So what are you doing? Thank you. Who would be on the spot, though? I this comedy! It's all the laughs! He's working, we're working together! <laughs> 
Did you ever see American Graffiti? Yeah. Good movie, right? <laughs> Did you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? The kind of like one you couldn't have one without the other, right? <laughs> like the way the soundtrack is put together, it's sort of very, you gotta connect those dots, people. <laughs> Some things happen and then, and then later things happen. It's, we gotta know our history. Do, do you like Banksy? <laughs> do you like Banksy? Street art with Banksy? Not really. Yeah, he's like British graffiti. It's not the same. <laughs> why they want this fit shirt. Oh, yeah. We got a George costume? George costume? Yeah. Let's see what I look like. Come down. Oh my goodness. Are you, a, are you young George or old George? Uh, I am uh, if George oh. and uh, Liam Cunningham had a child. All right. Yeah. Not, not, not the beautiful man of hair that you have. No, that's what you got when you're rocking a Francis on top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rocky, no yeah. Let me ask you this. You see Tucker and Man in his dream? No. You promise you will? Promise. <laughs> promise. You need to follow it up somehow. You gotta tweet it at us or something. Like, figure it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is delicious. It's a great pie. Because the two, the two boys got wrong by the house of pie pie. How does it compare? Oh, it's just, it tastes like zero thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's high praise for a pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> who here has a record player? And owns a copy of the, because I, I don't have any with me at the George Lucas talk show, original soundtrack. So you have a copy. Stand up if you have stand it. Stand up if you both have a record player. You know what? Own the George Lucas talk show soundtrack. Thank you. Life. Thank you for your support. I, because this liar from before. <laughs> I feel like yeah. you're a scoundrel. Everyone else can sit down except the scoundrel. <laughs> I have a soft spot in my heart for scoundrels. <laughs> Like, you, you tried your best, you tried to bluff your way through, you know, you're some, another ghost? <laughs> just, 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 just chill, did everyone feel that? The light was going through us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a copy of the More American Graffiti soundtrack. Now this is not the American Graffiti soundtrack. It's the more American graffiti Yeah, the greatest tagline in the history of movies. Remember at the end of American graffiti, you wish there were more? Well, there is. More American graffiti. Also, it's not more music from American graffiti. It's some music from more American graffiti. While you're walking over, name the songs that we got on there. We got... Love is like a heat wave, performed by Martha and the Vandellas. We got Moon River, performed by Andy Williams. Mr. Tambourine Man, performed by The Birds. My Boyfriend's Back, performed by The Angels. Yeah, it's, it's such a mm. you know, we haven't checked in with Butter Bear in a little while. Let's see what Butter Bear has to say. Always some production that was popular at the time. The team would have used Jackson's R&B vocals with drum machines and samplers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very good. What a wonderful children's toy from the 80s. George, we don't have a ton of time left. What do you mean? Where are you going? <laughs> Are we back on mortality? Are we tying it back together back to the beginning of the show? Great. We won't be doing this show forever. My museum opens in a year. And then you're done? Well, no, but I mean, how long do any of us have? Right? It's why we gotta take these opportunities to have a nice time and share pie and shirts with friends old and new. Yes. And a, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, are we doing Borat? What's happening? <laughs> Is this a new thing? Yeah, yeah. why? Yeah. 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 
All right, does anyone have any questions before? It's Trump. There's a on it. Yeah, tie on it. Check your trunk, your trunk, there's pie on it. <laughs> Who would have thought this? Is that your head? I do like that they shouted, check your trunk, and we all ignored it. <laughs> you know how embarrassing it is to look at an entire crowd going, <laughs> <laughs> You have food on your face, you fucking moron. Hey, Shannon. What do you like about being an actor? Oh, rejection is great. That's most people's favorite part. You get bummed out when people give you a chance to perform. Yeah, yeah that's not what I mean. No, I'm sitting at home waiting for my phone number. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can I tell you? Can I tell you an inspiring story drawn from the, this very conversation we've had this evening? Kurt Russell auditioned to be Han Solo, and he was rejected. And not long after that, he booked a little gig called The Fox and the Hound. <laughs> So he, he didn't get to be Han Solo, yeah. but he did get to be Todd, the fox, and have a wonderful, decades-long platonic friendship with Mickey Rooney, who I heard was terrible. I've heard some really foul stories about that man. Nothing I've heard some really foul stories about Mickey Rooney. I, I heard a story that I can't share because I don't remember the details of it. <laughs> Do I remember if you share the essence of it? I can share the essence of it. You just did we for this story. It's a story, and you know, take this for what you will, it's gossip. Allegedly. Allegedly. He's dead. Yeah, he's definitely dead. <laughs> That was almost clicky in the way you said that. I wonder if he needs a <laughs> The story that I heard was of uh, Mickey Rooney at a moment later in his career uh, making a reference to something he would like to do to another person. Erotic <laughs> erotically. Hey. I know. Don't worry. You guys asked for this. Uh, no, no, but don't worry. It, well, in a way, I apologize because the fact that I brought no specifics means that each of you has just sort of supplied your own and we've all kind of implicated ourselves by inadvertently uh, creating our own erotic Mickey Rooney fan fiction tonight. Despite our best efforts to keep it at bay. Some of you might be so mentally strong that you put the image from your mind. What could he have wanted to do? And to whom? Can I take a guess? What? Can I sure. take a guess? Yeah. Well, I'm Mickey Rooney. I wish I could have fucked that fox. <laughs> it, that wasn't it, but that'll do. Um, anyway. Put him on the list. Hey, uh, Don, can you just add uh, men who wanted to fuck foxes? As a subset? Oh, so put them on unfunny, unfriendly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Also, put them on your least funny song trick, too. <laughs> Look at all we've accomplished tonight. <laughs> what a good evening. Look at that. You know, you look back at an evening's accomplishments. <laughs> I'd say this is something that we should all strive to do in our daily lives. Make a leaderboard every day. <laughs> Make some categories. They can be new ones with each passing day. Sometimes you'll hold over one from one day to the next. Don't, don't change that. I like having unfriendly, unfunny men and then the answer being men who wanted to fuck <laughs> Don, can you scroll down? I want to give you credit for something. Very funny to write as not funny noises, what George is doing.
Does anyone have any questions before we wrap up? Or oh, oh yes. the ghost has got one. The ghost has a question. Uh, I would love to hear about even more of Mm. Ooh. There's always more American. I mean, you know, more American graffiti didn't do very well, and so we didn't we didn't make it anymore. Who, who here has seen what happened? Turn off the light. Turn off the light. Turn off the light. It's smoking. What? What? Wado, you never even executed that bit, did you? I did! When? It was on the whole time. The whole time? I did it during the, uh, the erotic fan fiction. I kept it on. I oh, framed it out. Also, have you guys seen the video from... It's, Force Awakens is premiering and people are in the theater taking pictures of the Lucasfilm sign. It, whoever said turn off the light had the same tone as the guy who says, Turn off the flash, you fucking moron. It was exactly the same. I like this part of the show because we're just, <laughs> we're just solving problems. Oh, it reeks. It smells so bad. I can stand. You can take that. <laughs> Billy Bay, everybody! Billy Bay! While George is gone, we should say after the show is done, the three of us will be in the lobby. We have posters uh, that are very cool. They look like the American Graffiti poster, but it's us with stuff. Um, and we'll sign them and stuff. But you should come out and say hi. They're by four spells, and they rule. They rule. Uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, I, I, there wasn't the demand for even more American Graffiti because I would have liked to make more and more and guess what, we got some more and hey, another big helping of American Graffiti. We should have been able to make a new one every few years covering you. We could have made one covering the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Go on, go on, everybody. And the water chair is back. I was worried we're gonna have to rest in peace. The water, the water, the water blue stool. Philadelphia chair. Yeah, uh, I did not expect to ever see this stool again alive. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Uh, if you would like to see more American graffiti films, most of the cast, I believe, is still around. Uh, Paul Lamatt checks. Cindy Williams. Yes. Cast? Oh, no, it's still around. Still around. Okay. Candy Clark. Still around. Charles Martin Smith is still around. Mackenzie Phillips is still around. Bo Hopkins. I don't know, Bo Hopkins. I feel like Bo Hopkins passed away very recently. Good news, I got a computer right in front of him. <laughs> that is great news. Still with us. And Harrison, Harrison's still around. Wow. Harrison Bo Ford. Hopkins, May 28th, 2022. Oh. I just missed the cut. Wow. <laughs> we just lost it. <laughs> So we could get more American graffiti. But not Bo. <laughs> I remember when Bato was sitting on a light for an hour and then it started smoking. And poof! It went poof. It went poof. I thought it had dropped from the jerry rig underneath the school to the ground, but in fact, it was like the light itself committed separately. <laughs> and just said, enough, let me fucking rest. Alice, I got a question. You worked on Adam Rooms Everything. Is it true? Uh, I, I, I want uh, yeah, to... Yeah, The UG was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it true? Is it true that he does he? everything? Yeah, does he? Uh, oh, you mean like in real life? Yeah. A lot of things. Okay. <laughs> Did he ever walk up to craft services and put his thumb in a pile? <laughs> That's one of the cleanest ways to ruin a pile. <laughs> Shannon, you worked on Difficult People. I did. I still got it up. <laughs> Were they? No. Okay. No, they're the greatest people. Uh, Wano. Yeah. You were in Attack of the Clones. Attack <laughs> <laughs> uh, of the Clones? Yes, I was. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, thanks. <laughs> Hugging Coca-Cola in the um, <laughs> Yes, yes, they did. They did. They did. Patrick? Mm. You were involved in the casting of an upcoming HBO Max series called Unlimited Squirrels. That's true. Yeah. Thank you so much. Were they? <laughs> Everyone have it. This is honestly. This is exclusive. I can't find that they kicked off the show. Now. Yeah, that has not been announced, but we just did it. So it? what are they gonna do? Is that on IMDb? It's not on IMDb. Oh. Oops. I can't wait for a variety article. Can you look at uh, on on uh, HBO Max to see if more American Graffiti is on there now? Yeah, sure. Because this would be a great time for people to uh, resubscribe if you're not currently subscribing. And make sure you tell them the reason you are subscribing is that you want to see more American Graffiti and Unlimited Squirrels. I gotta log in. You gotta log in? <laughs> is this your login or are you sharing a login with um, someone? I don't, uh, it is not my login. Oh, Patrick. <laughs> okay, American Graffiti is owned by Universal. Yeah. Peacock would be the most likely. But it's been, it's been on HBO Max in the past. Uh, it looks like it's on Showtime. Showtime. Currently. Oh, starring uh, Eddie Murphy. A movie starring Eddie Murphy, who I was in uh, Beverly Hills Country with. Yeah. You can also get it on Amazon for three ninety nine. Hey, that's a bargain. That's a bargain. <laughs> hey, how much for a little more of this American graffiti? Uh, you got four bucks. <laughs> oh, you got four bucks. <laughs> I I sure do love American graffiti. How much would it be for just a little bit more of it? Oh, oh you got four bucks. bucks. <laughs> Is the big bopper doing customer service for Amazon? Hi, hi, is this Amazon? <laughs> yes, it is. George has got a good big bopper. Hello, baby. <laughs> well, I guess we want to dedicate this show to Bo. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I think we should also dedicate this show to Watto's butt light. <laughs> Bow in the butt light. <laughs> the, two, the two bees, not unlike you and I, who recently acquired a new nickname. Oh, the two Get out there. Get out there. Yeah. That's right. Their new nickname is... Uh, some names in our time, but there's a lot that's been suiting us very well. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> we were given this nickname... Spontaneously, and we embraced it immediately <laughs> as our new identity, the two bastards. Oh, no. The two bastards. That's right. yeah. <laughs> it's fun like the three caballeros. <laughs> There's only two of you. Yeah, but then we got a little bastard. <laughs> Not dirty though, he's a clean boy. He's a clean boy. George, let's wrap up the show. All right. Thank you for coming to the George Lucas Talk Show's Philadelphia debut. We hope to come back here again someday and see you all. We will be signing posters out in the lobby. Yeah. Thank you to our wonderful guests. Thank you for coming. Thank you to the Thank you to the great guests and the great audience. And may the force be with you always. Bye.